Hi everyone, so we're going to be doing an example of reusing, we're going to be using values that we set up, which are functions, but also use states with some error handling and arrays, and also we're going to deal with boolean values and how we can manage all this input values to display the value on screen or not depending on if an error pops up or not. So let's get started on setting this up first. So what I want to do is just set up the import. I'm going to be setting up the function as well. And in this use state here for set chopping, I'm actually going to call another function. But first, let me set up all of these use states here. And you can see here, one of the use states will have a Boolean value right here. This one's just going to take in the string. And then this one, I'm going to actually pass over um, a function, but let me first set up the rest of this. And what I want to do is I want to set up an input value with the button in the return. So let me set that up first. And I'm going to um, make this button um, just call just call it adding and I want to do something in this button here on click on click here I'm going to check to see if the text dot length is greater than one then I will set the text to be empty and I will set a shopping set shopping to the array which contains these different um, objects of information it'll be ID and shopping dot length for the ID and then also just grabbing the text value for the text and what I'm going to be doing here is after each of the objects, the new objects, it's just going to add it on onto the previous shopping list. And then I will put an else statement. And this will be ca um, calling the show error um, method or function here. I'm going to set this up right below all the other use states and right above the return and I'll call it function show error and this is where we're going to check to see if the text dot length is equal to strictly equal to zero then we want to set the text error to be true because this means that there is an error and we should not be showing anything I'm gonna set up the ternary operator shortly but for right now let me just finish this part here and after the show error I'm gonna just console.log shopping and before I start adding anything else I'm also going to set up the external use state I'm going to set up the external function, um, which I'll be putting right under the import here. I'll put function create initial shopping list. And I'm going to call this function directly inside this use state right here. And it's going to call this function and it's going to initialize some information at the beginning. And I'm just initializing it to an empty array. And what I'll do is I'll create a for loop. It'll automatically generate something.
So what I'm doing here is I'm just setting up a array, an empty array, and then I'm going to for loop create a, uh, create a bunch of different objects to place into the the empty array, and it's gonna go up to um, number four, so it starts at zero, it goes up to four, so there will be five items that's gonna be automatically generated with an ID value starting from zero all the way to four because it's gonna be less than five. And there's gonna be item, which is gonna be called item zero all the way to item four for that text value. So I'm gonna save it here and I'm gonna try it in the browser. I'm just going to example five online here. So it looks like item value is not defined. So let's go back here. Okay, so this should be ID value. ID value plus one. So each item has whatever ID plus one because then we'll say item one all the way to item five and save that and go back to the browser, refresh. Okay, and I'll just say test. And it says can, can't read property of undefined reading length. Okay, so let's go back here and let's take a look as to what is happening here. So something to do with the length of what's being set up here. Okay, so what we forgot to do here is we just forgot to, I'm just going to also add the console.log initial to do. And then I will return because I have to return the initial to do back to the main function over there, down there. So I'll save it and just go back here, refresh. And you can see here that we already automatically get this populated all the way from items one to five because that for loop is automatically generating it for us. And now we can actually create some sort of um, display on screen as well. We have to map through it. So let's go back over here and down below under the button that we've created, we're going to just create an unordered list here and we're going to map through the shopping, shopping.map and we will say item In this item, in this item here, it will go through a list here of information, and this list will contain a key, so they're all unique each time it loops through, which will contain the item dot ID, and inside the list it will contain some information, which is item dot text. And now we can just save it here because now we're going to map through that shopping list that we've just created. So then we can create each new element and just display the text of what is being saved in that array. So let's go back over here to our browser, refresh the page here. And you can see we have item one, two, three, four, and five here on screen now. And what I forgot to do, what I did wrong is it should not be IL, it should be LI. LI for the opening and for the closing, LI. Save that. And there we go. We got a list of information here of all the five informations. And now what I could do here is, let me just try it, test, test, okay. But what we want to do is, if nothing is added on, it should not be creating some random stuff inside here. So we want to double check and make sure that the length of this is actually consistent 
of whatever's being entered. And we want to set up, let's say, a P tag here. And I'm going to check based on the text error. I'll see if the user should please enter a text value. But after that, if there is, if it is false, then we'll be okay. So based on this, we should get the right values now. So let me just take a look here. I'm going to refresh the page here. So if I click adding, you can see here it's a message showing up saying please enter a text value. And um, we can enter in something test, test, test. So we know that something is being added here all the time. It's incrementing that um, or adding on to that array of information. And you can see here we get some kind of message. It says please enter a text value. So it's just letting us know that there's some sort of error. And if we want to actually get rid of that error, we need to set this back to false once it's actually been passed in. So where we have to make sure that if this is true, if this um, portion on click is true, we need to make sure that this is always set to false so it disappears. So let me refresh this. And I will try test, test, okay, adding, nothing, there's nothing to add because it's empty, test, okay, there we go. So the error message disappeared now, so that is good to go. And just type whatever. So it's going to add on to that array of information. And that's how you deal with arrays and error handling, and you prevent just random empty spaces from happening within the display area. You need to set up these if statement checking based on whatever's being clicked and making sure that the length of the text is greater than one because if there is nothing entered in that input area, which is the text input, which is the input value right here, it's grabbing, setting that text value, the e.target.value, if it is empty in that input value, then that means that this condition of where text.length is greater than one, it should not be true. It will be false, so we'll skip it, and then it'll show that error. And what's gonna happen is once it shows the error, it'll tell the user they have to enter in something, so they have to retype something, or they have to type in something, and then once something is greater than the length of one, then they will be able to, well, this, then this code will be able to add to the list of information and it will display it on screen once they submit that information. And that's why we get this um, information displayed is because we're looking at this shopping, this shopping cart of information and it's mapping through all of the items. So we call the item one at a time and it's going to grab that ID, which is a unique key, because the key is something that cannot be duplicated. It must be unique for each individual item. And that's why we have the ID, which is starting from zero all the way up to five, and it's just incrementing all the time. So it's always going to be unique. And this one is just the text value. So whatever text we see on screen of whatever list of items, that's what's going to be displayed on the screen. And that's how you essentially deal with all this information and managing how you deal with error handling.